the number one killer after pneumonia of children in the world is lack of access to clean, safe water. So if you don't have access to clean water, you end up drinking, because we all have to drink water, unclean water that has bacteria and viruses in that. When that occurs, you can get uh, diarrhea, and diarrhea causes dehydration, and the dehydration causes cardiovascular collapse, or what we call shock, and death comes very, very quickly. Uh, we're facing a billion people without access to safe drinking water. Twice that number without access to sanitation. Uh, a, a child dies needlessly every 15 seconds. Literally, the young girls and women in villages all around the world spend most of their waking moments gathering water, carrying it long distances so that they can find the basics in life for their families and their communities. And children that lives are wasted because they are transporting water instead of sitting in a classroom and learning how to read or write. The original Water for the Poor Act was an important step forward in providing a focus and a priority for our efforts at international water and sanitation. Water for the World takes it to a new level to sharpen the focus, to be able to make sure that we have the tools to realize the promise. Well, the Water for the World Act is important because we have learned based upon our experiences with the Water for the Poor Act. It's like anything, after a little while you start realizing that some things need to be tweaked, some things need to be changed to be more effective and more efficient. And that's what the Water for the World Act does. These are the objectives of this bill. Number one, to keep putting water on the forefront, on the cutting edge, out front of our development aid that we distribute around the world. And number two is over the next six years, we will extend access, sustainable access to safe, clean water to about 100 million people over that period of time. For Paul, this was something that he knew was going to become more and more of a crisis because it was a basic need. And as water supplies dwindled, we were going to be seeing more and more conflicts as a result of that. Well, of course there have been wars over oil, but Paul Simon was right. There will be a battle for water as more and more people are born and they're, they're really struggling over this scarce resource. And if there's one thing that we have learned really over the last five to 10 years is that clean water, if, if put into a community, ultimately leads to a, a degree of economic stability, a degree of hope, a, a degree of, of productivity that you just otherwise would not have. So if you can provide clean water or access to clean, safe water, you end up having a productive impact on society, job creation, economic growth, and all of a sudden people have hope. And it's that lack of hope that brings people today to terrorism. These are tough economic times, but I will tell you there is no dollar value that is, has a greater rate of return for people around the world and for American interests than the money that we are spending on drinking water and sanitation. So it's a very strong children's issue because they're the ones who are dying today, and that is the future of the community. It's a women's issue because women who tend to, to run, strongly run, many, many of these societies will be freed up hours and hours in terms of energy and productive time. It's the moral issue of being able to reach out and lift people up very inexpensively. It's easy to do. We know how to do it. And then it's the security issue where it comes back to once you have productive economic development, that grows out of having access to safe, clean water. You create jobs, a productive society, and you give hope to societies who otherwise don't have hope. We have got to find peace in this world, and we've got to do it through humane, caring policies. Coming together on a bipartisan basis in Washington to try to provide water to every corner of this earth is a good, humane thing to do, which will lead to a better and safer life for most people. For what it would cost a typical American family, uh, half a takeout pizza a year. It would be transformational. You say, why? Why would we invest 
in clean water around the world. First, it's easy to do. It's easy to do. We know water comes out of the ground. It's a matter of getting it distributed appropriately. Uh, number two is cheap. It's just cheap to do. When we talk about an investment of $1, the return on that, the return on investment is $8 when it comes to clean water. But it's also a huge moral issue. Children aren't even named until they're almost five years old. They, they aren't sure whether it's worth the investment in that. And uh, yet we know that in this country, we know every child is precious. Every child is a future that we want to uh, promote and protect. And I can't think of anything we could do that would be more uh, meaningful in another country than to help them do the same for their children. It's hard to imagine 5,000 children a day dying from diarrhea or waterborne diseases. You know, they don't know what hit them. Their mothers don't know which way to turn. They're desperate, losing a child in their arms. I think about that, and I think that this issue goes way beyond some political calculation. This is a human calculation. Who are we? What are we made out of? What do we care about? What we're, what's worth fighting for? And I think this is worth fighting for. America has risen to a challenge every time we've had one. And this is a challenge facing the world that we can help to resolve in our favor to make this a safer, more peaceful planet. There's a picture of a woman placing the blanket-drapped body of a child into one of these death carts in an African country. And when I saw that, I thought, how in the world can we allow this to happen? We would